Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. Be humble or you'll stumble. Over the centuries, we as humankind like to go from one extreme to the other. We allow the pendulum to swing so far left or so far right that we lose uh, being centered in the middle. In the past, we've seen the culture, most of the time teaching that we are nothing, that we can do nothing, that we represent nothing, that we should keep our head down and just go through life. Walking humbly with God is not about allowing other people to take advantage of us. Walking humbly with God is not about becoming a doormat for others to just step on us. In today's culture, though, it's teaching us that everything is about me, me, me. How many of you heard the phrase, just be yourself? It's all about yourself. I think, in my opinion, we can be more than ourselves. We can be the best version of ourselves. I know they are coming from a perspective of trying to boost confidence and help others thrive in life. But if it's taken to the other extreme, when we talk about just be yourself and it's all about yourself, can do more damage than good. Culture is going in a direction of just be yourself and it's all about yourself, which leads to more demanding, a spirit of entitlement, not satisfied with what we have, which in my opinion, it's not walking humbly with God. I was reading some statistic that about selfies. Do you know that just Android devices reported 93 million selfies taken a day? So if you add uh, Apple products or iOS devices, it's going to end up probably over 200 million selfies a day. Think about it. It's all about me, how I'm getting that picture. And some people take five, six, seven because they are not happy with the one that they took. And then they start adding all kinds of filters and they start changing the color and all that stuff. It's all about us. It's all about me, me, me. Today is a that's what today's culture is teaching. Somebody was joking, but was saying, I think it's a seed of truth in that. Today's genera generation, it's called a selfie generation. <laughs> think about it. But C.S. Lewis said this, humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. Walking humbly with God is not just tear us down and just think less of ourselves. And it's about thinking of ourselves less. With other words, let's think about God and let's think about others more. Humility is not natural. Actually, many people will call it the forgotten virtue. It is much easier to talk about other qualities like patience, kindness, compassion, respect. You know, some of those qualities are very tangible. You can measure them. Humility is not measurable. I want to tell you a quick story. Five people were in a small airplane, private airplane traveling. And one pilot, uh, halfway... Uh, flying, the pilot said, like, mayday, mayday, looks like we have a problem. We are going down. The problem is we have only four parachutes. We are five. You guys try to figure out who's going to not get one. He grabbed one and jumped up the airplane. The other was a doctor. And the doctor said, well, I saved so many lives in this world that I deserve to live. He grabbed one of the parachutes and jump off the airplane. The third person was a lawyer. So the lawyer said, I am the smartest guy in the world. 
the world needs me. He grabbed a parachute and jumped. Are only two persons left. One, it's a preacher, and the other one, it's a little boy. The preacher is looking at the little boy and said, Son, I lived a long life. I know where I'm going. I'm going to meet my Creator. I'm going to meet my God. I'm going to heaven. I'm at peace with that. You grab the other parachute and jump. The little boy is looking at the preacher and said, Preacher, we are okay. Don't worry. Everything is fine. Everything is going to be fine. The smartest guy in the world just jumped off the airplane with my backpack. <laughs> what is the moral of that story? The moral is Proverbs 16, 18 that says this. Pride goes before destruction. Actually, I really like the message translation that said this. Pride goes, be no, uh, message translation, it's saying, first pride, then the crash. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. This lawyer had too big of impression about himself. He was not humble, and he sure stumbled over the door of the airplane and sure crashed when he landed. Pride actually is the oldest sin in the universe. And it shows no signs of growing any weaker with age. Pride actually took Lucifer out of heaven. It was pride that took Adam and Eve out of the paradise. It was pride that took Saul, the first king of Israel, out of kingdom. And it's pride that changed angels in demons. It is pride that actually changed friends in enemies. Pride ruins everything, and this is why. Pride is the cancer of the soul. And if it's left unchecked, it will destroy our spiritual life. So how do we overcome pride? Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5 said this. Apostle Paul is writing to the uh, church of Philippi. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. This is how we overcome pride. Going further, Apostle Paul is saying, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interest. See, Apostle Paul is not saying don't look at all for your own interest. Because we are human, makes sense to look for our own interest. But Apostle Paul is saying don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. And he ends up the passage with, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus did. Think about it. Jesus Christ, the Son of the God, the Son of Almighty Creator of this universe, he left everything in heaven and he came on earth. He humbled himself. And the Bible said he humbled himself to nothing for us to be able to be something in God's eyes. When Apostle Paul is saying we must have the same attitude as Christ, he's saying we need to care for others more than we care for ourselves. See, in my opinion, when we are humbled, when we have humility, it's going to bring around us unity. Unity it's the result of the humility. Because when we humble ourselves, we recognize when we are wrong. 
we start uh, using words that are forgotten in this world, like I'm sorry, and start apologizing. But I would like to challenge each one of us. When you apologize next time, try to not add a but at the end. How many of you, I did it many times, I try to apologize for something and then I'll say like, but I wouldn't have done this if you wouldn't have done that. And you know what we are doing without realizing? When we say but this, but that, we are technically canceling the whole apology. I will challenge you. Try to apologize without saying but. And you'll realize how hard it is. I started saying like, I'm really sorry I did this. And he's like, I want to say it, I want to say it. Can I say it? And then I tried to just bite my tongue and say no but. It's not easy because it's not in our nature. We always want to find excuses for our behavior or for how you act or for what we are doing. Challenge to you, it's apologize without adding a but. And more you practice, the easier it's going to be. You may struggle with, you may um, struggle, you may struggle with pride if the language that you are using is complaining and criticizing. Those two, complaining and criticizing, it's pretty much like a but after an apology. We try to just figure out who else's fault because this happened. The language of arrogance, it's complaining and criticizing. But the language of humility is gratitude and encouragement. Think about it. And I know we live in a culture that is so many reasons to be, to complain about. Look at the gas prices. Right? You fill your tank with gas that used to be 35, 40 bucks and it's over 100 bucks now. First reaction, complaining, right? But you know what? If you are developing a heart of gratitude, you'll realize that actually some of us were able to fill the tank with gas today. I remember many, many times when I had to put only five bucks or 10 bucks or 20 bucks of fuel, in the, of gas in the tank, and I didn't have. And you know what? I, did, I realized I was more thankful at that time than I am today, when I still have the ability. I know it's painful. I know it's hurting. I know you have to trim your budget. I know you have to eat out less or wherever to adjust and modify your budget. But... Let's be intentional in developing a heart of gratitude because God provides for our needs. I'm so honored and humbled to be part of this church that love to give. Last Sunday, we uh, found out that we have uh, two friends, a couple that are going to go to Hungary to work with refugees on the border between Hungary and Ukraine. And we, as a church, decided to try to raise $500 or $1,000 for them. And my goal was like, well, if we can raise $500, it will be awesome. And we decided to send an email out, and Kelly said, like, let's try it for $1,000. I was like, sure, but if we raise $500, I will be really happy. Well, today I want to tell you that we raised so far $985 for this couple to be able to buy supplies and games for the kids because we want, they want to help with kids. You know, in the middle of a war, the most affected ones are the kids because they have so much trauma that they are going to have to put up with for the rest of their lives. I've been part when, of the revolution in 1989 when uh, we threw out the communists in Romania. I was 14 and a half years old, and I seen bodies on the streets, and I seen tanks shootings, and uh, army fighting army, and army fighting the security uh, police, and so forth. And you know what? It took me decades to be able to come at peace with what happened 
in my life at that time. And you know what? We fought for something good. We fought for freedom. We fought for freedom of religion. Some people in Ukraine, peoples of Ukraine, all people of Ukraine, are fighting for their own homes, are fighting to just be able to keep what they work for decades or even longer, families, generation probably. And I'm so proud to just be part of this church that gives sacrificial, a small church that appreciates donating and giving, thinking about others. When people give, and we are part of a church that love to serve, and I'm so touched and moved by people that serve in the children's ministry and serve on the hospitality and come early and make the coffee and prepare the donuts and uh, set up the chairs and the drapes, which is a lot, uh, which uh, runs the sound system or the projector system and so forth. We, we do everything here thinking about others because we want to be more like God. We are learning and practicing what Apostle Paul was telling Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And this is this. Tell those rich in this world, in the world's wealth, to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. So, tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money. Have you ever thought, uh, let's finish it, which is here today and gone tomorrow? Think about it. Any of you look at the stock market recently? Because a lot of people lost a lot of money. A lot of people are not sure even how they can retire anymore because they lost so much money. Apostle Paul, inspired by God, is saying, don't put your trust in money that can be there today and but gone tomorrow. I'm not saying don't plan for the future. I'm not saying don't invest. I'm not saying don't plan. I'm just saying, like Apostle Paul said, don't put your trust in God. And you might think in your mind, when I read this verse, at the beginning saying, tell those rich in this world. Well, this Bible verse doesn't apply to me. This uh, verse is applying to the rich people. Statistic proven, do you know that actually, if we are making $34,000 a year as a household income, we are worldwide statistic, we are in the 1% of this world. I read those statistics and make me understand and make me realize that we are part of the rich people. Do you know that actually 85% of today's world live in um, homes that are not qualified to live in? When I say that, that means no running water and no electricity. 85% of those people, think about it, almost 9 out of 10 live in a house that doesn't have electricity or running water. I think all of us that are right here today, or maybe watch online, we have electricity and probably we have running water. So technically we are rich. Let's not... Uh, disregard some Bible verses just because they are addressing to the rich of this world. So we go further in the Bible verse and the Apostle Paul is saying, tell them to go after God who piles on all the riches we could ever manage to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. This is how we overcome pride by thinking of others more than we think about ourselves and help them and do anything we can. Trust in God 
and be rich in helping others, it's a formula of success. I'm not aware of anyone on that died that was on a deathbed and said, you know what, I wish I gave less to this cause, or I wish I didn't spend so much here or so much there when we talk about inspiring and helping and supporting others. Everybody at the end of their life, they are looking back and think, I wish I could have done more. We have to just be intentional, not waiting for that. Not waiting for our life to end, to become more like God. We need to become more like God today and be like him more through the rest of our lives. So Apostle Paul is ending the passage like this. If they do that, if they are rich in helping others and extravagantly generous, if they do that, they will build a treasure that will last, gaining life that is truly life. Bottom line is this. Humility is recognizing that everything, and I mean everything that we have, it's a gift from God. He just let us use it. Let's not inflate, let's not overestimate what we bring to the table. Because after all, what we have, it's because of his grace, it's because of his uh, blessings upon us. So today, I would like to challenge, a second challenge to you. Look for an opportunity for the next few days, weeks, Look for an opportunity to put someone else ahead of yourself. Think about when you go to a grocery store or when you pass a um, homeless person or anything out there. Think about how can I put someone else today above myself? What can I do? And many people are thinking he everything has to do with finances. No. You can put others above yourself without spending a dime. It's about encouraging, it's about uh, lifting up, it's about empowering others, it's about being there for one another, it's about doing life together. Jesus made himself nothing for us. Let's be more like him. Let's put other people's needs before ours to encourage others. If we learn to love God more than ourselves, we will learn to love others more than ourselves. Everything has to start with loving God first. Let me say it again. If we learn to love God first, we will learn to love others also. We will learn to see things as he sees things, and he is going to show us what to do about that. To be able to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly. We cannot become more like God without doing all free in our lives and develop all free. As we, wrote, as I, as we read uh, Micah 6, 8, we have to act justly and to love more mercy and to walk humbly with our God. I hope those, those Bible ver this Bible verse is going to inspire you as inspired me uh, since I was a teenager to be able to just pursue those qualities in my life. And I would like all of us to just stand up because I'm going to pray. And if you are watching online and you never gave your life to Christ, you don't have a personal life, uh, you don't have a personal relation with God, I would like to invite you to do that, to just ask him in your life because he wants to help you have abundant life. And abundant life, we will have it, we will achieve it when we give our life to Christ and we'll develop those qualities of acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly with our God. If you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, I would like you to just repeat after me. Jesus, I realize today I need you in my life. I am a sinner I try my own ways and I fail so many times. Today I recognize that your ways 
It's the best way. So I'm inviting you in my heart. I give my life to you. And I'm asking for you to help me, empower me, inspire me to be able to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you for the rest of my life. Amen.